Hi everyone, we're in the middle of a series called Lift and this is a series that originated from a story in Exodus chapter 17 um, where the Israelites, God's people, are travelling from having just been liberated from slavery in Egypt through the desert, through the wilderness, heading for the promised land which is the land that God was going to give to them and where he had promised to make a, a base for them and their descendants. And on the way, they get attacked by an army of a group called the Amalekites and they end up in a battle in a valley. And during this battle, Moses climbs up the hill, his leader of the, the Israelites at the time, climbs up the hill, stands on the hill, and he stands looking down over the battle with his arms raised in the air. And whenever his arms were raised, the Israelites would be winning the battle. And whenever his arms dropped, the Amalekites would be winning the battle. So he kept his arms raised up in the air and he had two companions who came alongside him who helped him hold his arms up and they sat him on a stone as well. And it helped him to keep his arms in the air. And eventually the Israelites won, won the battle and Moses builds this altar, which is what he used to do to celebrate battles in that period of history. So he built an altar to the Lord his God, which he called Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. And I really encourage you to go back and look at uh, and watch and listen to the messages that Paul and Sarah have done over the last few weeks, looking at that particular story and at that concept of the Lord being our banner. And there's so much to take out of that. And I really encourage you because I know that that will inspire and help you. But today we're going to look at a story fast forwarding several hundred years through the Bible to another battle, which is referred to in a book called the Psalms. Now, Psalms is a, a book, not of stories, but of poems. And it's a book that we know some things about. So we know some of the authors, we know some of the context for some of the Psalms, but there are others that we haven't got a clue about. We're going to have a look at Psalm 60 and Psalm 60 starts with essentially a context statement. It starts with a statement that gives us some of the detail and some of the history behind the psalm and when it was written and who it was written by. And this is before the verses even start. So it's almost like a bit of a preamble or an introduction. It says this, to the pure and shining one. This is from the Passion Translation. King David's poem for instruction, composed when he fought against the Syrians with the outcome still uncertain, and Joab turned back to kill 12,000 descendants of Esau in the Valley of Salt, to the tune of Lily of the Covenant, which is my, certainly my favourite ancient psalm tune. But uh, this is a poem by King David. So King David was the guy and it's written about in the Bible that's, that is described as a man after God's own heart. So this is a man who knew the heart of God, who knew what the, um, the will of God was in certain situations, who knew the character of God, who had also known victories. He had won many, many battles. He had beaten lions and bears in his youth. He had killed the giant Goliath. He had won many victories as a, as a war hero and as a commander of armies under King Saul. And then when he became king, he won lots of battles in, under his own right. So he knew what it was to be victorious. But it's also a psalm, we know it's a poem, so it's creative and it's expressive and it's passionate, but it's a poem of instruction, which is a bit of a funny concept, but essentially is a poem that is meant to teach us something. Um, and he wrote it or composed it when he fought against the Syrians with the outcome still uncertain. So essentially, before we even started reading this poem, we know that this is a psalm of uncertainty. This is about a time of uncertainty. And it goes like this, verse one in the Passion Translation. God, it seems like you walked off and left us. Why have you turned against us? You've been angry with us. Oh Lord, we plead, come back and help us as a father. The earth quivers and quakes before you, splitting open and breaking apart. Now come and heal it, for it's shaken to its depths. You've taught us hard lessons. You made us drink the wine of bewilderment. You've given miraculous signs to those who love you. As we follow you, we fly the flag of truth and all who love the truth will rally to it. 
Verse 4, that's the Passion Translation. Verse 4 in the New Living Translation says this, but you have raised a banner for those who fear you, a rallying point in the face of attack. This is a psalm for a time of uncertainty. This is a battle against the Syrians where the outcome is still uncertain. Moses stood in a battle against the Amalekites where the, where the outcome was uncertain with his arms raised. This is a psalm for a time of uncertainty. Now I don't know about if you've ever faced any times of uncertainty. I've got a slightly frivolous example of a time of uncertainty uh, for us, many years ago, or several years ago, not many, but several, my wife and I went on a camping holiday in Wales, and we had three kids at the time, and we decided, as you do when you're on camping holidays in Wales, to climb a local mountain called Cader Idris. Now, if you've never been up Cader Idris, which I haven't been at the time, it is stunning. It is beautiful. It's a fantastic mountain, and the scenery is absolutely spectacular. It was a beautiful day, absolutely amazing but it's a long walk. And it's a long walk, particularly when you've got a five month old strapped to your back and two children who are also with you walking under their own steam, but who half an hour into the six hour walk decided that they'd had enough. Their legs were hurting, their feet were hurting, they didn't want to be there anymore, they didn't know why we were climbing up this stupid mountain in the first place, and they just wanted to go home and have an ice cream. And so after about two hours of the constant complaining and concern. I'll be honest, I'd had enough as well. I didn't want to be there either. I'd had enough. I didn't know what, how, where I was going or what I was doing because I'd never been up this mountain before. My wife had been, but I hadn't. I didn't know how far it was to go. If I'm honest, the backpack was hurting, hadn't brought enough water, my feet were hurting, tired of the complaining, I was done. And by that point, I'm sure I was an absolute delight to be with for the rest of my family. But I just didn't want to be there anymore. I just wanted it done. I wanted to get to the top and I'd had enough. But we persevered, we carried on, we coaxed, controlled and carried the kids up as you do and pushed them and potentially me up the rest of this mountain and got up to the point where we got over a ridge, reached the top, sat down, backpack off, right, that's it, we're at the top, all we've got to do now is get down the other side and psychologically, I was halfway to the fish and chip shop on the way home already. When my wife stepped in and said, you do realise this isn't the top, don't you? What? Yeah, yeah, no, that's the top. To which I, I'll level with you. I think I've completely blacked out the next few minutes of conversation because I cannot for the life of me remember what I said but I do know that my wife has referred to the mountain ever since as Cada Paddy Idris purely on the basis of the absolute strop and paddy that not the kids had that I had when I decided that I didn't want to climb that mountain any longer because it hadn't met my expectations. I thought this was the top and I didn't want to have to go back down the ridge and back up the other side and it's okay because that was a long time ago and I'm completely over it. But sometimes, and it's a tenuous link, I'll grant you, but sometimes life is uncertain, the outcome is uncertain, and it is difficult when it doesn't meet up with your expectations. And like I say, it's a frivolous example, but we know that life is like that in general anyway. But this psalm, Psalm 60 verse 4, this is a psalm for a time of uncertainty. God, it seems like you walked off and left us. Why have you turned against us? You've been angry with us. Lord, we plead, come back and help us as a father. Verse four in the NLT, but you have raised a banner for those who fear you, a rallying point in the face of attack. There are times in life when the way ahead seems uncertain, but, God is raising a banner. When you can't see the way ahead, take comfort. God is in the uncertainty. God is raising a banner for you to rally to. A banner raised in a battle is often a rallying point. It's a place where the troops go to when things are in disarray, when it's not working how it was meant to, when they're losing the battle, when everything is disorganized and the outcome seems uncertain. A banner is put down 
and a rallying point is created and the troops rally to it. Not to relax or hide or cower in fear, but to be inspired, to gather together, to strengthen one another, to go back out and continue the fight. And it's that point of inspiration. Right? This is where the great battle speeches occur. Okay, This is Churchill's, we will fight them on the beaches, we will never surrender. This is Aragorn's, there will come a time when there may be a day when the courage of men will fail, but it's not this day. This day we fight. This is William Wallace's, they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. It's Henry V with his um, we lucky few, we band of brothers, for he who sheds his blood with me will be my brother. This is the US president standing on the back of a Jeep in a parking lot, shouting into a megaphone, this is when we celebrate our Independence Day. And I admit that's a bit of a generational reference, so if you've never seen that film, you can look it up. That's absolutely fine. But this is the moment for every inspirational speech. This is when, at the rallying point, People come together, they strengthen one another, they rally together. And when the outcome seems clear, when the way ahead is uncertain, but faith is lifted and hope is lifted and a banner is lifted. You know, this is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. In Matthew 26, 39, he went on a little further and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Not exactly a motivational speech, but in that place of greatest turmoil and pain, faith in the father is lifted. Not my will, but your will be done. And Paul said it a few weeks ago, the banner was lifted. Jesus, the man on the hill, was lifted as a banner to look to in time of trouble, to bear the weight of my sin and my shame, to bear the weight of your sin and your shame, to be raised up as a place to find forgiveness and love and hope and faith and salvation. God is raising a banner for us to look to in time of trouble, not, not to cower in fear, not to despair at what is going on, but to rally, to regroup, to go back out into the fight. No longer ashamed, no longer guilty, no longer in despair, no longer struggling, but in victory in faith, in hope, in love, in peace and in power. If life feels uncertain right now, don't worry, that's normal. Ecclesiastes 7.14 says this, enjoy prosperity while you can, but when hard times strike, realise that both come from God. Remember that nothing is certain in this life. When you can't see the way ahead, don't worry, it's normal. And God is in the uncertainty. There's a singer um, called Tasha Cobbs Leonard, who's an amazing singer. And if you've never come across her work, please do check it out. Um, but she has a quote in, in one of the, almost like one of the preambles to her songs, which is that sometimes God will lead you in a foggy place, but it's when it's foggy that his sheep hear his voice. And I love that imagery, that when it's foggy, when life seems uncertain, when life is difficult, when life is foggy, when you can't see what is ahead of you, when you can't see what's around you, when you lose sight of the important things, when sometimes all you can do is put one foot in front of the other, that's when we need to learn to hear God's voice, when we need to learn to hear the rallying cry when we need to learn to hear the voice of his spirit. When the outcome is uncertain, allow God to raise a banner in your life and rally to it. Because there is something you can be certain of. Philippians 1 verse 6 
says this, and I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returned. You know, you're not the finished product. I'm, I'm not the finished article. And that's a really encouraging thought for all of us. And I think sometimes we need to give ourselves permission to not be the finished product, to not have everything all together, to not be as perfect as our Instagram or Facebook feed might help, might help us to portray, but actually to be incomplete, but to be a work that God has started, knowing that he who has started a good work in us will finish it, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. And that happens through the work of the Holy Spirit. That happens through him working in and through us in every decision that we make, in every situation of our lives, in every opportunity, when the way forward is uncertain, when we choose to put ourselves in his hands, when we choose to look to him as our source of strength, when we choose to look to him as our source of wisdom, when we choose to put our lives ultimately in his purposes, in his plans, to say, do you know what, God, I can't see the way forward. I can't always see what is going to happen next. I can't see where this is going to turn out, but I'm choosing to trust in you. I am choosing to trust in you because you are good, because your word is true, and because you are faithful to your promises. And sometimes that's all we can do in those situations and circumstances, to choose to look to the Lord, my banner, to the man on the hill. And you know, if you don't know Jesus today, you can still rally to his banner. You can come, you can find rest, you can find restoration, you can find forgiveness, you can find hope, you can find faith and peace and love. And all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask him and he will give it to you. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong. Jesus, I'm sorry for when I haven't got things right. And God, I want to choose to leave my old ways behind me. I want to choose to live your way. I want your will to be done, not mine. Jesus, come into my life and change me. Help me to live a new life in you. And for the rest of us, for the rest of this week, choose to allow God to lift the banner in your life and rally to it.